Hi there, Jeff here. In this video, we're going to revise the key topic of stagflation. So stagflation basically is a situation uh, where an economy uh, is experiencing slow, stagnant growth, uh, rising unemployment and also high and rising inflation all at the same time. So it's a combination of stagnant growth and high inflation. Normally, Inflation and unemployment have an inverse relationship if you've studied the Phillips curve. But stagflation breaks that standard pattern. It's obviously a particularly troubling and difficult uh, problem for central banks and also for governments. So stagflation is little or no growth of the economy, economy on the edge of or at risk of recession. Uh, high inflation. So prices going up, the cost of living going up, causing real incomes to fall and more people finding themselves out of work. We tend to refer to stagflation when we think back to the 1970s and the 1980s, in particular the mid-1970s, and I'm old enough to remember this, where we had the first really big global oil price spike. The era of cheap oil came to an end and inflation rocketed up to more than 20%. So stagflation often associated historically with spikes in the world price of key raw materials, oil and gas, especially affecting countries that rely heavily on importing those commodities. So the main causes include supply shocks, we just mentioned, the sudden rise in oil and gas, or a big rise in the price of other key raw materials and components, copper, um, cocoa, whatever it is. Often poor macro policies make things worse, um, maybe keeping interest rates too low for too long and overly loose monetary policy can cause some demand pull inflation, allied to a lack of supply side productive capacity, and it's essentially mainly caused by cost push inflation, where cost of production, including energy, raw materials, components and wages, start going up, causing businesses to cut back on output and profits and investment when prices are still rising. Now, is the UK at risk of stagflation as we speak in 2025? Well, there are some concerns about potential stagflation, perhaps not quite as severe as a couple of years ago, but they remain a, a topical issue for students. Growth, well, it's weak. The Bank of England has just revised downwards their 2025 growth forecasts, but they've cut them from 1.5% to 0.75%. So they've halved their growth forecasts. The economic outlook for the UK has worsened in the last three to six months. And they're also predicting unemployment will go up, perhaps to 4.75%. As I speak, it's at 4.4% by the summer of this year. Inflation is a pressing issue. We've had disinflation. Inflation has come down. But the Bank of England is expecting inflation perhaps to rise above the current rate of 3% towards 3.5% in the late summer. Some economists predicting it could reach 4% sometime this year, which is double the Bank of England's target. And in response to these challenges, weak growth, high inflation, the Bank of England has decided recently, in fact yesterday, to maintain interest rates at 4.5%. Again, that's a reflection of the concern about the risk of inflation and global economic uncertainty. Take a look at this chart. This chart shows the monthly growth of GDP since the start of 2023. And the black line suggests a contraction. The blue line suggests an expansion. Well, we've had several months six months, possibly seven in the last year or so, where output has either been flat or falling. So the growth rate of the economy seems to have stalled. Inflation has come down from the peak of over 10%, 11.1%, wasn't it, in October 22. So we've had some disinflation during 23-24, but some signs that inflation is starting to rise again, currently 3%. How can we show stagflation if you're an exam student? Well, one is one approach is to use ADS curves. Here's a, a model of the economy showing essentially the rate of inflation on the y-axis and the national income on the x-axis. There's an equilibrium at Y1, GPL1. We talked about the supply shock, didn't we? So an increase in the world price of key commodities, if you import them, shifts aggregate supply to the left, causing real output to fall and the rate of inflation to go up and that really is the way to show stagflation and you can add to that if you get a wage price response. We can also use the Phillips curve analysis, short one Phillips curve of course uh, is drawn as an inverse relationship between unemployment and inflation. Now it tends to shift upwards 
during stagflation because inflation is no longer tied purely to aggregate demand. It's being driven upwards by rising costs and supply disruptions. So higher actual inflation leads to higher expected inflation, which in turn causes wages to rise as people, perhaps represented by unions, stop bargaining collectively for higher pay to, make, to protect their real incomes. And a higher rate of inflation, the danger is, can then become embedded into an economy. What do I mean by that? It means that people see high inflation and come to expect high inflation, and often that leads to high inflation. So here's a Phillips curve diagram, inverse relationship, non-linear between unemployment and inflation. As unemployment falls from U1 down to U4, eventually inflation starts to accelerate. But if there are uh, if there's stagflation, the Phillips curve shifts upwards. So, for example, at U3, instead of inflation being 2%, it could rise to 6%. And the danger then is that people start to expect higher inflation. So that shift in the Phillips curve is one way of illustrating potential stagflation. How can central banks handle it? Well, there's a dilemma. And this is a really good bit of analysis and evaluation to think about. On the one hand, when inflation is high, central banks are normally raising interest rates. They're tightening monetary policy to cool demand and inflationary pressure. Uh, but when unemployment is high and low growth is weak, certainly weak at the moment, central banks normally be lowering interest rates to stimulate the economy and prevent uh, rising unemployment, perhaps even uh, a recession. So in stagflation, they can't do both at once. They are walking a tightrope. So usually interest rates do rise in the bid to bring about a period of disinflation. That's what we saw in the UK from 2022 onwards. But the, the focus now really is shifting to try to bring down inflation through other means. Uh, getting, becoming, making the economy less dependent on imported gas, for example. Improving our road system, improving transport logistics. Trying to generate more competition in markets to bring prices down. Trying to get more people back into the labour force trying to increase labour productivity, policy attempts to invest in better infrastructure to relieve supply bottlenecks. Of course, all of these things take time. So stagflation is something that's not easy to, um, to get rid of. A couple of things here. This chart shows inflation and this sort of grey line there. We've seen that chart, haven't we? And the blue line is wage growth, including bonuses, so it's regular pay plus things like overtime and bonuses. And you can see that... Uh, with the rise in inflation, wage growth has picked up. You know, for most, this is the 10-year chart. For most of the first half of the period, wages rising by, what, 2 3 4% maybe. Now they're rising by 5 6%. It's something the Bank of England is worried about. They're worried that 6% wage growth could be leading to sort of a minimum of 3% inflation going forward. And that makes them reluctant to cut interest rates. And here's the inflation interest rate chart, bang up to date. Interest rates down to 4.5%. As you can see, inflation starting to rise again up towards 3%. And the Bank of England is probably a little cautious about cutting interest rates. It should do. There's a potential recession on the cards in the summer. But they're worried that they want to maintain relatively high interest rates until the inflation outlook improves. So, do we have 1970s stagflation? The answer is no, but we have some elements of stagflation. Um, continued high wage growth, rising inflation embedded into the system, and slow growth. So this is one of the big stories to know about when you're studying the UK economy as we head towards the exams in 2025. Thanks for joining in. Stay safe, stay curious. See you sometime soon.